اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Benefits of SLR In this part of the session we are going to focus on the benefits of SLR It provides a comprehensive understanding of existing knowledge SLR helps identify, evaluate and synthesize all relevant studies on a specific topic or a research question Now, Along with this identification of research gaps It highlights areas where further research is needed, enabling researchers to contribute to original work. Now, normally when you are doing your PhD, the supervisor will ask you for your topic or the area that concerns you, that the area that you think you should focus on. And most of the times, the supervisor will ask you to go and dig deep into that topic. Now, one of the ways to dig deep in to that topic is to do a systematic literature review now you can do it on the past studies for like 10 years maybe 15 years 20 years now this will help you identify what has been happening to that particular topic over the past 10 15 20 years how did that particular topic that concept came into being how it developed how it evolved has the definitions changed have the measurements changed over time how did the research start and what is the current state of research now it will help you identify significant number of gaps in existing literature it ensures methodological rigor the structured and transparent process reduces bias and increasing the or increases the reliability of findings now since a number of methodologies would have been used when different studies were conducted on that particular topic now by going through all those papers you will understand what or what methodologies have been used in existing research and which one will fit your study it can help you develop theory it will support the theoretical development now by synthesizing the findings from various studies slr can help and build refine theoretical frameworks you will have a better understanding of the theories and how one theory can help you or the different theories can help you explain the relationships which theory has been used and which theory or what theories have not been used in existing research to explain a particular phenomena now it can help guide policy and practice slr offers evidence based insights that are valuable for practitioners and policy makers Now again there are strong practical implications of slr as well and it helps improve the research quality because you've gone through so much detail on the topic you understand the concept you understand the operationalization you understand how operationalization can complement the conceptualization you understand the different methodologies used you understand the theories that have been used now with the understanding of all these things it will definitely improve the quality of research and furthermore the most important part is it enhances your academic writing and critical thinking by engaging with diverse sources it sharpens analytical skills and improves scholarly communication the more you read the better you are getting at writing now the only secret to writing quality research papers is reading and when you are doing a systematic literature review you are reading a lot the more you read the more you understand the pattern of writing that work is already published in high quality journals so it will help you enhance academic writing and critical thinking you will you will be able to develop your arguments in an appropriate manner Now let me give you some examples of systematic literature reviews. Now let's first discuss this systematic literature review on servant leadership. Now this is one of my personal favorites uh, reason being it's very easy to follow and it's published in a very high quality journal on leadership the leadership quarterly. Now again it is it starts off with an abstract 
then we have the introduction describing the value the need to study servant leadership and obviously when you are going through the work on servant leadership you yourself will develop an understanding of how that concept has evolved now if we look here the authors understood that there are three phases on the research on servant leadership now the first one focused on conceptual development and the second on the measurement and the third which is the current phase is on servant leadership research which is the model development phase whereby you assess the interaction between different variables as to how one is related with the other and the third phase has seen a proliferation of studies of servant leadership with over 100 articles with and two meta analysis being published in last four years that's a very specific number why are these specific why are these numbers specific because they have identified the time frame in which they are going to conduct this systematic literature review and then based on their understanding of existing literature on servant leadership based on their search they have identified the need for this research and once identified all these things the gaps in existing literature on servant leadership they have identified or proposed these four research questions now we are going to talk about these research questions but but later and they did a systematic literature review using these databases so the research papers were, sel were selected from these research or these databases now this is one example another example responsible leadership and uh, its outcomes now what's the difference here it was only a single topic that's it that is systematic literature review on servant leadership alone nothing else now, if we look here here it's responsible leadership and its outcomes so you are assessing or conducting a systematic literature review to assess how responsible leadership influences different employee outcomes so you can do both you cannot fix it on one particular topic or you can link it with other topics as well and then do a systematic literature review and they have used prisma approach prisma flowchart we are going to discuss that later as well Now they are first discussing the theory as we mentioned it's very important this will give you better understanding of how different relationships are developed in light of different theories now different methods that have been used or in particular they would have been or they would be discussing the, the methods used for systematic literature review this is the flow chart which we are going to discuss later in detail and then they are developing different propositions as to how responsible leadership can be linked to other variables one important part of systematic literature review based on the identification of what has been done in existing research is the proposition of gaps and that's very important because that will lead you to propose your own complex model for your research now in this study once they document everything this is the nomological and network proposed all these things will be discussed in detail now this is the important part suggestions for future research now your readers can combine these different research questions into one and conduct their own study you yourself can conduct or create a more complex theoretical framework based on these suggestions for future research now normally all systematic literature reviews will have these suggestions for future research moving on there is a third example as well again this is a prisma based systematic review on economic social and governance practices again they have used prisma approach and focused it on three topics but they are not linking it they are not linking it with other variables they are calling it ESG performance and disclosure and this is the nomological network. 
Now we will be discussing all these examples in detail as we go along as well. Now developing a research question and a search strategy. Conducting a systematic literature review begins with a clear definition of what you intend to explore. Now you have to define what is it that you want to explore. This stage sets the foundation for the entire review process and ensures that the resulting evidence is both relevant and reliable. Now, in order to conduct a more conclusive research, a more conclusive systematic literature review, what you need to do is you need to have a research question or different research questions. Defining research question and objective of the review. The research question serves as the cornerstone of the systematic review. It should be specific, focused and answerable. Unlike general literature reviews, an SLR demands a clearly articulated objective that aligns with the research goal. Start by identifying the broad area of interest based on existing knowledge and practical issues. Now, let's say in this case, our broad area could be servant leadership or it could be authentic leadership. It could be knowledge management processes. It could be internal marketing. Now, that is the broader area of interest or corporate social responsibility. Narrow down or narrow this down by identifying knowledge gaps or inconsistencies in the literature. Now, this is what we did in the example or we looked at it in the example as well, that they focused on servant leadership and they looked for what are the inconsistencies? What is it that is missing in the literature? A systematic literature review on a topic, if it's missing, that's, that in itself is a gap. By mentioning all these advantages of systematic literature reviews, you can obviously conduct a systematic literature review yourself. Now, there, was, there is another example where I did a systematic literature review on the measures of corporate social responsibility. Now, because there was no research available on the measures of systematic literature review and to guide future researchers on using specific well operationalized reliable and valid measures of corporate social responsibility based on this or these gaps i conducted a systematic literature review use frameworks like pico population intervention comparison outcome or spider sample phenomenon of interest design evaluation research type to structure your question now we are going to look into these frameworks we are going to look into prisma as well formulate both main review questions or and sub questions if applicable and finally clearly state the objectives of the review for example to synthesize the findings assess the methodological quality or identify theoretical trends now an, an example is what is the impact of remote work on employee productivity in technology firms during covid 19 pandemic now this is a research question that we can answer through a systematic literature review now let's look at some of the research questions proposed as part of a systematic literature review. If you look here, let's go to the research questions. Now based on the identified gaps, the rationale, the need for a systematic literature review, four questions were formulated in this case. Now normally if you are conducting a systematic literature review on one particular topic, these are the kind of questions you are going to ask. You are going to ask how is the servant leadership concept or it's defined and understood? How is servant leadership measured and what are the strengths and weaknesses of those designs, research designs, those questionnaires proposed, those skills developed? What do we know about servant leadership through existing empirical research? How is servant leadership linked to other concepts? And what is the future of servant leadership research whereby we propose the different research questions? Now, if you look here, let's see if we've got a question here. Therefore, this paper proposes two specific questions. First, what is the nature of relationship between RL and presentism? And second, does presentism decline with organizational commitment and turnover intentions? 
mediate RL. Now, these are the two research questions. Very specific, very focused, explaining the type of relationships or the kind of research they want to do. Let's look at this one. If you've got a question here. The key research question addressed are as follows. Which journals, countries and theories dominate ESG literature in non-financial firms? Very specific, very focused, identified the topic and the context of the study. What are the dominant themes in the ESG literature and what are the future research directions? Now, this is how you are going to propose your research questions. Now, again, I would encourage you to read the introduction of these papers before, like, read the introduction and see how they are proposing the research questions. Now, we are going to look into some other examples of the research questions as well. Thank you very much.